Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And I know for a fact that the only thing that's going to get mentioned in the comments on this video is talking about XRP price action. Um, and I do want to ask all of you out there, what is your price prediction around XRP within the next couple months and possibly even years ahead? As we do look today, I'm going to go over a few things happening around XRP and even Ripple. Um, it seems as though the takeover has begun, right? Uh, we are seeing XRP being mentioned everywhere. Ripple obviously expanding rapidly, so they are everywhere as well. And it is a recipe for incredible growth, uh, not only price wise, but also the ecosystem itself. So let's dive in to this announcement that we've seen from Blockworks. And we do see Ripple takes notice of South Korea looks to boost XRP ledger adoption. The company behind the cryptocurrency XRP and the XRP Ledger is partnering with a local research firm to shore up its footing in South Korea. Down here, Ripple continues to look for opportunities to scale up its business and bring its services to new countries after emerging partially victorious. You gotta love when they hint at the partially, right? Uh, from its years-long legal battle with the SEC. South Korea is Ripple's latest gambit. The company said on Tuesday that it will be partnering with SEAL-based firm Catalyze Research to bolster awareness of XRP Ledger. Three engineers founded Ripple launching XRP Ledger in June of 2012 as a peer-to-peer -peer blockchain. The network had 116 active validators as of July 27th. So this is going to be great. Um, in terms of what we are going to see, this is going to boost developer participation on the XRP Ledger. Uh, which is always, like I said, you know, like as we look at the XRP ledger, the biggest crucial thing to focus on is adoption outside of Ripple, because don't get me wrong. I love what Ripple's doing with XRP, um, but outside of Ripple, like we know XRP is not Ripple. We know Ripple is not XRP. Uh, the XRP ledger is an animal of its own. And um, when we start to see a lot of these use cases from the retail sector, for an example, going live on the XRP ledger, it's definitely going to be very exciting. Uh, we've talked about a few of them on the other channel, which is like Solo. I know Aquarium is one that everyone is mentioning. Uh, we also talked about a few other ones as well. So the XRP ledger is definitely something to watch for, especially in terms of the adoption on it. Um, and again, they talk about South Korea. So South Korea has emerged as a vibrant hub for blockchain and Web3 technology with a strong developer community that has showcased remarkable innovation and expertise. And yeah, a lot of these areas are um, very acceptable uh, to crypto, right? Like they want to utilize crypto. They want to become a crypto hub. And that's why, you know, Ripple's eye on them. Also, recently, Ripple new on-demand liquidity partners leveraging XRP for use cases beyond remittances. Shout out to uh, Peter Vaus for this. He's posting uh, this um, article to the Crypto Basic, which is also uh, quoting Wrath of Kahneman. We do see Ripple new on-demand liquidity partners leveraging uh, XRP for use cases beyond remittances. And this was July 26th. And we do see Ripple is now onboarding new on-demand liquidity partners le that leverage XRP and the XRP ledger for other use cases beyond remittances. And again, like I said, you know, as the XRP ledger continues to, you know, expand, you know, it's going to be great for a lot of value added. And uh, we do see one notable partner, Nutrisource, an agricultural uh, company based in Singapore, has made significant strides in sub-Saharan uh, Africa since 2020. And he goes on to mention a few things around the project, essentially how this works is it empowers farmers through technology-driven solutions, uh, utilizing an agrochemical business and a cutting-edge farm center app. Um, and this is vital for a lot of those farmers. And again, however, the specific use case for XRP remains unclear. Similar trends are seen with other recent on-demand liquidity partners, including Oceanus, uh, Valency, and Star Dreams. He emphasized that this growing pattern highlights XRP's potential as a robust infrastructure beyond traditional remittance and treasury operations. And of course, Ripple sets the stage. Ripple's pivotal announcement in November of 2022 laid the groundwork for this paradigm shift. The company renowned for its payment solutions tailored to financial institutions expanded its services to cater to corporate customers like Nutrisource, recognizing untapped potential in various industries. And uh, these industries include, of course, encompass trade, agriculture, e-commerce, technology, and supply chain segments, signifying Ripple's commitment to evolving in response to customer needs. And uh, we do see this transformation in Ripple's approach was driven by the desire to address the limitations of the legacy financial system across multiple use cases. So this is going to expand into almost every single industry very well. Like I said, you know, with uh, the Web3 world and what's happening around Web3 and this new financial system that's rising essentially from the ashes of the old traditional system, you know, this is going to, you know, usher in 
digitalization, tokenization of almost every single major industry and sector out there. And it's going to touch so much money. Like I, I don't think people realize how much money is out there, but a significant percentage of the, the global money supply is going to be touched by this market. And it's very exciting. And here we have a list of all of the, the major partnerships, you know, the new on-demand liquidity users, new corporate payment pro uh, partners as well. This is from November 1st all the way through January 30th of this year. So um, pretty significant list. And again, you know, there's so much happening here. Um, XRP is going to be leveraged for a lot of things outside of payment. So imagine the network effects that will happen with XRP. And then also talking more so about, um, you know, the, the Palau, uh, you know, news. I, I, I made a video about it. I want to go over this again because Cowboy Crypto actually posted something very significant that I missed, which was we've got two who announced projects and five under NDA. This is from Anthony Welfare. Check this out. So what are we learning? So we've got two who announced um, projects and then we've got five under NDA. Um, Royal Monetary Authority of Bhutan is a real CBDC, so there's a central bank and they've issued a currency and that's very much uh, at decent stages at the moment. And Palau is actually a US dollar stablecoin. So Palau has its own government but no central bank, so they use the US dollar. So we're issuing um, on the public blockchain, on the public XRP ledger, a USD stablecoin for this country to use. That's actually quite in interesting for innovation because there's other things can be done with that. Palau is issuing a dollar stable coin on the XRP ledger. You just heard it out of Anthony Welfare's mouth. So yeah, I mean, this is a huge announcement. And of course, Anthony Welfare is the CBDC advisor at Ripple. Um, this is a significant announcement. Again, five are under NDA still, so we still need to wait on that. This video is from, of course, XRP Darren. But this is, of course, Anthony Welfare talking about uh, CBDCs and partners and things like that. And then also, you know, I just want to mention uh, Ripple expanding within the UK. I mean, they are seriously taking over at this current moment in time. Like nothing is stopping them. Uh, from going full force and the adoption is definitely happening. The expansions are definitely happening. Recently, we talked about the UK market and how large the UK market is around FX transactions. They hold a significant percentage of the global FX uh, transactions volume. And um, we even do see like Ripple is applying for a crypto license in the UK following its partial victory against the US SEC. And this is from Cindy Young, the managing director for the UK and Europe at Ripple, confirmed that the company has recently applied for a crypto asset firm registration with the UK's Financial Conduct Authority, FCA. Additionally, Ripple has also sought a payment institution license in Ireland. So, you know, again, it, it, this, this decision around the SEC has allowed for them to expand rapidly, especially within some very large markets, the UK being one of them. Ireland is more so for the euro, right? Like they want to they wanna expand within Europe uh, greatly. So they are really kind of targeting that. And then also remember, like, you know, how, having these five under NDA, I, I really do wonder which ones those are. Um, we do know that recently, actually, Susan uh, Friedman, former uh, policy at Ripple, she was talking about the benefits of introducing digital currencies globally, um, including fostering innovation, financial inclusion, payment efficiency, and even environmental resources. Watch the full interview over here. This is from the Digital Pound Foundation. We already know that Ripple's on the Digital Pound Foundation. We know that they are entering the UK market pretty heavily. They always have been focused on the UK market for a while as well. Check out this video. It's about a minute and a half long, and then I will talk to you guys about some other things as well. Digital money will help to increase access to financial services for under and unbanked populations and also encourage uh, or I should say enhance direct person to person payments. We think that the initiatives will help to enhance existing payment infrastructures. It will digital currencies can help increase the speed and efficiency of payments. Uh, we think that the um, initiatives generally will help to foster innovation. So using digital features like smart contracts and programmable money will be the basis of new financial services. We also think there's an opportunity for digital currencies to help reduce energy use and environmental resources by, by presumably phasing out the printing of paper money and the minting of coins. Um, so we think that there are a lot of, uh, we see a lot of different threads being fostered by the development of digital currencies. At the same time, we recognize that central banks are really grappling with how to encourage these while also maintaining financial stability and control of their monetary systems. And this comes back to, you know, as different countries work on different initiatives, ensuring that 
um, we're not building, building walled gardens, that there's interoperability between currencies, that currencies can flow freely between countries and do so in a way that allows, um, that maintains financial stability will really be, you know, at the heart of the, the challenge ahead for, for all countries considering CBDCs. So yeah, I mean, as we really kind of look at Ripple and we look at the CBDCs, especially the digital pound, we you know look at the recent um, the recent announcements, especially with the Palau uh, CBDC or stablecoin, if you will, on the XRP ledger. To me personally, I think that we are starting to see uh, Ripple become a big giant, which they've always have been, but now it's it's really out there in the public. You can see it now. Um, and I think that the SEC lawsuit really was the thing holding them back from, you know, having this rapid expansion, which has seemed to really accelerate after the SEC lawsuit was kind of put behind us. Um, and I do wonder what's going to happen from here on out, because there has been a lot of initiatives. We already know that the Digital Pound Foundation, just like the Digital Euro Association, are think tank um, organizations. But these are very large organizations that are working with some very prominent names out there around uh, CBDC technology and how they can plan ahead on uh, CBDC technology. And we even do see like the digitization of the monetary system is progressing. The monetary system will undergo fundamental changes over the next decade. And uh, it really will. And I do think that Ripple is a key player, like I've said always. Um, once you go down the rabbit hole of Ripple with XRP and you connect the dots, it's it's almost it, it's almost impossible not to think that Ripple is a major leader around this major innovation that's happening. And, you know, again, the Digital Euro Association just recently on June 29th announced that Ripple CBDC Innovate Challenge is happening. Uh, where they will welcome developers to participate in the hackathon and share your CBDC app concept before August 18th, uh, which this is happening right now. Um, there's over $200,000 worth of prizes. This is something pretty big, and it's all built upon the public XRP ledger. These are applications around CBDCs. And remember, like as we really kind of look at that, you you got to think about how much expansion is going to happen once we have these CBDCs in place, and you know we start to see the 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 world of finance change into the internet of value, if you will. Um, think about how much money is going to flow over the XRP ledger. Like XRP is a token that I feel so comfortable holding for the long term. Um, that's why I don't really care about recent price action. I don't care about if we're at a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. I know where this thing is headed. I know what's happening right now around, uh, you know, the Web two world with Web three and you know tokenization, digitalization. It is so exciting to be in this market right now, and it's so exciting to understand what's happening with Ripple and what's happening around XRP. So uh, yeah, I mean, with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. Us, uh, is up to you all. Have a beautiful day or beautiful night wherever you guys are in this big world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.